In this tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, deforming an object using the Mesh Deform modifier. Okay, it's a more powerful version of the Lattice mo modifier, but it also takes up uh, more compute time as well. And this is an old model I did several years ago when I was experimenting with Blender. It's before I knew about proportional editing and you know edge loops and things like that. And that's why I have some anomalies in here. But I did use it in this story that may still be posted online called Deep Sea Ice Fishing, right? And so that's how I was able to do that because I certainly am not going to come in and try and paint that, I assure you. Okay, so, but now what we're going to do, instead of like using bones and armatures to, you know, change the position of the fingers, what we're going to do is gonna try and change the position of the whole hand. So I have over here, let's see, I have over here this mesh as well. So I'm going to move this over into layer one real quick and then go back to layer one. All right, I better get my light that I left out of the scene. Okay, so now what I have is, this is just a cube, and I subdivided it a number of times, and I'm in texture mode, and I applied a material for transparency. This is one advantage of working in Blender Render, is that you can do these transparent type effects in here in real time with real time shadows. So I do like both, Blender Cycles and Blender Render. All right, but what we're gonna do in this case is I wanna make I want to turn this into essentially kind of this cage that deforms uh, this object down in here. So I want to grab the object, which I was well, called cube, but that's the object. I want to go here and get the modifier and the mesh deform modifier. And then in here, I want to grab the object to deform with and I'm going to press cube.001, which was that cube out here. And then you're going to press bind. Now, I don't know if you can see, no, it's outside of the window. This takes a little bit of a time, you know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Sometimes my computer, you see that little circling there? That usually means it's not responding or it's thinking. It actually even says up on my title bar right now, not responding, but I'm confident it will come back. So, okay, so it must be bound right there. So basically it is bounded to this object in like this. Let's turn this transparency down a little bit more if I can. Where is that? I have the alpha 5.4. Okay, so there it is like that. All right, so now we can see it. So then I'm going to go into edit mode. And maybe I'll grab a couple of uh, edges up here. Let me see. I'll grab that edge and maybe that edge, that edge. Yeah, okay, we'll just do those for starters just because. All right, and then when I have it, now when I move this, you move these edges here, you'll see I'm actually distorting the whole hand, moving it however I want. Right, very powerful way. The one thing you notice in this particular case, this model here, that hand is not physically connected to that right there, and this thumb is not physically connected. So those anomalies there you see is just because those were all individual objects. But like I said, that's before I knew what I was doing with modeling. But so then you can get this great effect like this, with the mesh to four modifier and then of course you could still put your bones in here on the fingers and use your IK and to curl the fingers or whatever so then you can create different types of effects with both because otherwise to try and do this at if this effect you know with you know well, I don't know you know try to do that with having the bones through the fingers and the hands well it's not going to work so it gives you a lot a lot more uh, possibilities. Blender is so powerful. Those guys are just, they are unbelievable how good they are at programming this stuff up. Right? Alright. Okay, well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.